welcome back to the shop. Uh, we've got our parts that were cut on the machine. Um, the next bit I'm going to work out is holes. Um, and most part, I'm kind of trying to just identify all the holes and what size I need uh, for each one. Some of them are tapped, some of them are not. Uh, some are clearance holes, some need to be sloppy for uh, adjustment, and some need to be pretty snug. I think most of these are all able to be a bit sloppy. Um, one of the other things is seeing the holes is I'm just going to come through with my with my punch and give them a bit of a oof that's loud isn't it give them a bit of a tap so I'm going to actually just go around each of these and kind of mark the I think I'll just mark the diameter of them so this will be we'll do quarter actually you know what I'm going to check a quarter um, these I'm going to put in with quarter 20 cap screws and I'm just going to check real quick how much clearance yeah so if I drill them as a quarter there will be enough room with the thread the thread puts it at uh, 245 so if I drilled it at 250 that's five thou of play on all the screws so it should be able to help align it so we're going to say 0 0.25 0 0.25 this is a bit banal but with as many holes as there are it's probably wise to do this. Um, I have yet to decide exactly what size the 80-20 holes need to be. Um, so I'm just going to um, I'm going to leave those until later. The other piece I want out was right behind me is this is the bearing block that's going to get mounted right here on the inside and so it will get mounted using uh, threaded holes and the holes are going to be filled using, it looks like, 5 millimeter screws. Yes. Okay, so 5 mil screws, and that's the length of them right there. Um, and there's a little bit of slop in these holes, so I can move them around. So these have to be drilled and tapped for 5 millimeter. It means I've got to figure out, nah, because I haven't yet. No, I actually haven't yet. <laughs> um, I have to figure out just how, yeah, these are too thick for that. I have to figure out what the the drill the holes diameter for the drill di I need to figure out the drill size for the tapped hole. It should be I think well it's five millimeter eighty so I've got to go look that up. I haven't I wasn't prepared to look that up just yet. Um, so I've got to do that one. Um, I'm thinking these are going to be five sixteenths, but they might be eight millimeter. So I got to double check that. They're going to be through holes and not tapped. So we'll look at those in a minute. Um, I guess I'm going to do the same thing to this one. So these are all quarter 20s, and those are also... We're going to move to this next piece. Um, this is the table, and a few of the holes that it's got are... Uh, these are for the stepper blocks. That's what these guys are. They have five or four six millimeter holes in this configuration. So there's four of those. So I'm going to drill those a bit oversized. And so I'm going to take a six millimeter, I'm going to take a, these are the actual screws. I'm going to take a six millimeter screw and I'm going to measure it. So, oh, I should point out, fellas, everybody, this project is going to annoy the crap out of anybody who hates metric or hates standard because it's going to have a little of both in everything. Um, I'm going to mount with quarter 20 screws the frame assembly and I'm going to mount the screw, the, the bearing trucks with five millimeter screws or six millimeter screws. I'm going to mount the screws with met metric. It's going to be a mishmash because it's what I've got for hardware and it doesn't matter at all. It's just a matter of knowing which wrench you need and I'll just have a series of them. It's really not that bad. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, so we're going to use six millimeter holes here. Yeah, these threads. Okay, so we're going to figure out how big to drill these holes. Right now in Imperial, that is 230 thou. So if I drilled it as quarter at 250 thou, that's 20 thou of slop in there. That's plenty of slop to get these things to align nicely. I want that slop there so that I can adjust a pair of these so that the axis of the, the rail is perfect in line with the two of them so or make them in line with the axis of the rail 
Um, so I want that slop just in case. Um, I'm never going to be able to machine to within a thou on my machine. That's why I didn't drill these. That's why they're getting done oversized so I can make the part work and have the bolts keep everything together, which works fine because that machine's work built the exact same way. Um, so I'll bring it back here. I'm going to figure out my dimensions for the 8020 real quick and we'll work out uh, some thread depth stuff. I'm going to get a little more prepared, I guess. And all right, a little more prepared now. Um, so for the 8020s, these guys, they're going to be screwed in by these two inner holes. There's two holes. I'll show you a better shot of this. You'll see this eventually. So I'm going to end up tapping these holes. And so I bought a spiral tap with multiple flutes. So hopefully with everything clamped right, um, I'll be able to tap the ends of these. It's going to be kind of interrupted, so I'm hoping it'll work. If not, I will um, use a bolt or something. I'll figure out a way to form those things or whatever, but I need to get those holes tapped. So those will be 5 16 And then for the... Uh, for these guys that are going to use 5 millimeter holes, the tap on that, it's really funny. A 5 millimeter 0.8 thread is almost, I would say, damn near indistinguishable from my standpoint. Um, this is, I know machinists will go crazy, but a 5, 16, uh, a five millimeter uh, 0.8 thread is almost exactly the same as a number 10 32 in standard. Like the threads mesh. I've got a dump. I've got number ten screws, and this is a five millimeter screw. And you put them side by side, and they mesh. The holes almost perfectly match. Match. Sorry, that was a weird diversion. So this is drilled to five sixteenths. Drilled to five sixteenths. Okay. This one is drilled to five sixteenths. These guys get drilled with a with a third uh, an eleven sixty fourths. Technic technically, that should be a number twenty one, which is smaller. No, as the numbers go down yeah it's bigger than that so it's fine all right so those are all marked i'm going to do the rest of all of these i'm going to get all of them going um so i've got everything marked and i'm there's a lot of holes and a lot of sizes to keep track of. Um, the main plan will be to pilot hole all of them with the same size drill because any that are not already drilled out need a pilot hole before I drill with the final size. I usually end up with a better location and a more accurate hole that way. Um, so first thing I'll do is I'll take this all to the drill press and I got all these things like marked. And this one's more complicated because I marked almost all the holes. Well, not even that. I did not mark every hole on this even. Um, but I'll, I'll drill all these divots out to one eighth, and then the markings will tell me what size hole the next, the final size will be. And I also wrote on here whether they get tapped into what thread. Um, hopefully this helps me keep track of everything. I have checked and double checked and triple checked and made sure I'm putting the right size holes in the right spots and for the right mounting. So for example, we'll bring this one back. So this one is actually, this was the first part I cut on the machine. Um, no, this wasn't the first part. This is the first half inch part. This is the first big part I put on the machine. And I'd forgotten that the nut for the lead screw is going on here and I'm gonna want some wiggle room for it too. So this is actually missing counter bores that need to go in that match this. So what I'll do is I'll drill out the final uh, size that the hole will be for 7.30 seconds. Oh, this one's got 
Yeah, no, 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 sorry. I see a tap thing, but that's for the center. Okay, so these will get drilled out for 7.30 seconds because that's a five millimeter hole. And 7.30 seconds is a lot of wiggle room or a little bit of wiggle room for that. So that gives this some, some play. And then after I've drilled that out for the five, uh, 7.30 seconds, I'll come back with a half inch drill and start the counterbore, but I won't finish the counterbore. I'll finish the counterbore on the mill because the centering of this hole is kind of, I need it to be centered pretty well. So I'm gonna try really hard to make sure I get that centered right. So I'm gonna have to make a counterbore for that, long story short. Um, and then the other ones, uh, there's nothing else all that fancy here. This will get slotted, but I'm gonna drill it for quarter inch first so I can slide a quarter inch end mill down in there and then on the mill slide back and forth and make a slot. That's what those two will get. Um, this is just going to get a few holes. It's only got a four, got two pairs of four holes. Sorry, it's got a pair of sets. It's a, uh, two sets of four holes. There, better study. Jeez. Um, so that's really all there is to it. There is nothing for the linear rails yet. Nothing for these guys yet. I'm going to get those set up and then come in with a transfer punch and mark where those holes have to go. I'm also going to drill these out so I can hit them with quarter, quarter 20 holes instead of whatever fits here now. I think five, five, maybe six. Does six even fit? No, it's only five. So I'm going to drill those out for a little bit bigger hole. Um, and then those will get, I'll worry about aligning those after the whole frame is assembled. Um, so that covers all that. I'm going to take you over to the drill press real quick. And we're just going to get a bunch of holes piloted real fast. Okay, so we're over here. I've got the small bits because it's just easier to bring them over first and do them, and then I'll bring the big bits over. But um, we're just going to get after this with the eighth inch bit and just hit the little dimple and uh, spot these things. This is just giving me pilot holes all the way through the, to help guide the bigger holes. So that's nice. And for stuff like that to happen then rather than later. Brush some dust off, some chips off. I'm just going to go after these as you would expect to go after holes. Just do them. Okay, so first task uh, is the next size hole, but I've got a bit of a problem. So when I cut, the, when I marked the holes for one of these, the plunge depth was deeper than it should have been, and my really bad plunging moved these holes down. So I don't know if you can tell, but the hole in the back is closer to the, to the top edge. So hold on a sec, I'll use the right fingers. This hole here is closer to the edge than this hole, and this hole's too low. So we've got a problem with that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stack them, and then I'm gonna stick this brass that's an inch and a half into the stepper hole to help kind of align things as best I can. I may have to pop it with a mallet here. There we go. Okay, and then that'll keep them, I really only care about this hole for the stepper Thing, uh, stepper notch, but it needs these holes in the right places, and this one is right. I'm going to use it kind of as a guide to drill the next size up hole. Hopefully, we'll see if that even absolutely even kind of works at all. I'm going to move real quickly, deburr this set real fast with a countersink, and I'm going to get these clamped together, and then I'll show you what I got. All right, so I've got it. Oh, here I'll show you. Got it clamped up with the brass insert. They're both clamped 
the good one is on top and the holes, I don't know if you'll be able to see down inside there, but they're quite misaligned. A couple of one, two, three blocks over this chunk of MDF gets me past the clamps. Just barely though. And so I just kind of wiggle them around so I can get a good purchase. 136 thou drill bit to get us into the size. This may or may not even work. We'll see. We shall see. I'm going to try it on this hole because it is the most stable. And uh, we'll give it a go. Your eye. Make sure I can get there. Yep, I can. Okay. It ain't pleased, but it's doing all right, I think. Okay, we found MDF, so that's good. This one's probably my next most stable. Hold on, we're spinny. Let's try now. Not pleased about it, but it's doing it. I'm going slow as well, because I want to make sure that any chance it's got to make successful, make a successful outcome is there. There, I think. Let's see. Going slowly. I may need a. I may need a different setup for this hole. I'm gonna. I'm gonna finagle stuff around and see what I can do. All right. I think I've got something that'll probably work here. I've got a. I'm gonna slip this around here. Tighten that up. So I'm over the top of solid table at least at least okay and now i'm i've got the hole positioned over a corner in a one two three block directly underneath that yeah that should work that should work okay i mean i could probably put it in the milling machine and gotten it really good but there is some slop in those stepper screws, so this should be okay. It looks like the holes kind of go straight down. We'll see how this worked out when I unclamp everything, but I'm going to do another little bit to this one uh, in a second. So I'm going to leave this clamped up for now until I get to the holes for this, because this has the exact same problem with the slotted the holes that are going to become slots. I want to put a quarter inch hole in them first so I can fit an end mill in. So I'm just going to leave this clamped up like it is until I get to those that hole size. And that is till I get to quarter inch. So quarter inch is the last ones. Thankfully, that's also the last holes on these parts. So I'm going to put these away and we'll get this one ready to go. All right, next is these holes. These are just the stepper ones here. tapping it later. This isn't a much bigger hole, so I'm a little worried about those mounts to make sure there's enough screw, enough material left when they were offset. They were offset a good amount, but we'll find out. Um, next one is the, we'll find out the next size hole. I think it's the 1164. We'll be right back. Okay, so we're now doing the 1164, which are the sideways mounts for the screw blocks. Uh, for the end bearing blocks for the screws, uh, the pillow blocks, I guess you could call them. Um, those are going to get tapped to the 5 millimeter 80 or number 1032. Um, so drill those for 11 64ths. This is all going to go quickly. And do do. And do do. One other part, we'll go get the other one here and I'll put it on the on the drill press. Alright, there's the second part. Second vice, same as the feist. Gotta get one back there. And this one. Like a glove. Alright. Those are done. The next ones, I believe, are 1364. So there's a bunch of those. I'll bring you right back here. 
All right, we're going to have quite a few 1364s because this is my tap size for the quarter 20s. It's a little oversized, but I like it because when I use the spiral taps, it just it's a cut, it's a cleaner cut. And yeah, it's oversized, but it's only oversized by like four or five thou. It's not that bad. Um, it cuts just fine. It, it threads just fine. So I just need to be careful. I only drill those. Actually, it doesn't really matter because anything else has already been drilled for the size of they're all all these holes are actually going to be ending up bigger anyways but so we're going to do 30 1364 these parts i've got at least i think only four of them don't have these so we're going to do quite a few of these so i'm just going to get after it and you'll see this one and then after this i'll i'll speed you up All right, next holes are for the lead screw nuts. All get 732nds for the uh, five millimeter clearance hole. This is the one, remember, we need to counterbore. So these will be the last four that I do that need a half inch bit. So we can put this in now and get ready to drill those. There's only 12 of those holes, thankfully. Not too bad. I think there are any of the other parts, so we just have these. Just do them real quick, yeah. Just get them right into the middle. Seven thirty seconds. Ways we go. Now is when I have to start being a little careful because if I drill the wrong ones, we have some problem. Hold on a second, you probably can't hear me. There we go, drilling our 730 seconds holes now. These are through holes for the lead screw nuts. Remember we have that counter bore yet. Make sure we're on the right hole. This is where I want to be sure, although most of these are pretty obvious. My marking is pretty decent here. Pretty sure got them all in the right places. We'll find out in a moment. All right, the last four right there. There we go. Uh, next step up, I think, will be the quarter inch holes. So we'll bring you back in just a second. Okay, so we have a good deal of quarter inch holes we need to do now. So I'm just going to set up. I'm going to spare you the boring. Ha, ah, this is drilling. We're boring holes. It's the boring details. But uh, yeah, same old, same old. This is for um, anything that's going to have a quarter inch in bolts passing through it. That's going to be all four, all eight of these. Every one of the linear guide nuts gets a quarter inch hole and there's a bunch on the side parts too because they are what mount the sides to the base we still have to do some edge tapping for that or drilling and tapping for that too but um yeah we're just going to get after this hold on a sec Okay, the next size up is the 5 16 holes for the 80-20 mounts. There's only eight of those holes, pretty quick. So we'll get those going now. Let's see if this drill bit is sharp at all. Might be. Oh yeah, we're good. It's taking a big chip though. These are just through holes. 
the ends of the 8020 will be tapped. This way with it. Like so. Good so far. That's hot. That ship is warm. Huh. That's this part. We'll get the other piece now. Yeah, it was quick, right? It's quick, yeah. Quick edge. Okay. Out from under the chip. I'm not hesitating. If I hesitate, it'll squeal like crazy. But if I really go at it, it does fine. So that's part of the reason you're seeing me kind of ram on it a little bit. I just break the chip because I don't want a long, stringy one that grabs my arm. That is the last one. Yeah. All right. That's it for the whole drilling on the faces of these things. I've got a few that need some. These holes go into the base, and the ed edge needs to be drilled. But we'll get to that next or later. We'll get to that another time. So now we're going to go back to the bench and uh, see what the next steps are. Boy. All right. Well, anyway, we're going to see how this whole relocation strategy did. It looks like on at least the quarter inch holes it did okay. So let's unfasten these guys. And let's have ourselves a gander. Okay, well it moved the holes. I'm afraid that they were just very, very far off. It did exactly what I needed. It put the holes that I drilled right where I wanted them. However, I have a feeling those are going to be very horribly tapped holes. So I have a choice between, I don't know what I want to do. I can either tap them and see how they do, and if they suck, I can drill them out and put nuts on the other side to hold the steppers in, or I can remake one part. I have completely torn down the CNC setup. I have cleaned up all the aluminum shavings. I'm rather loath to recut one part. However, the good news on this, though, is the stepper mount actually undergoes very low, very little load. There's very, all it has to do is hold the weight of the stepper. There's very little cutting force that's translated to this, to this mount. If you're designing it right, it shouldn't be a, an issue. So I'm not worried about the threads too much yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and I'm going to keep this part. If it doesn't work out, I will use nuts. I have lots of nuts, through bolts and nuts. That'll be all right, too. I can put a castle nut on it or whatever. Okay, last and final step is we're going to do these, start these counter bores because the next process I want to do is get the counter bores and then head over to the mill and do the few tiny things that the mill is needed for on these parts. And then we'll work out tapping. So really quickly, we're going to run back over to the drill press and we're going to counter bore these holes out. And I was going to do one other bit. I just remember, just forgot what the other piece was I was going to do. Dear, whatever it was, it's gone now. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to start the counter bores for these and then, uh, and then we'll see what comes next. I'll bring you back. All right, so we're set up now. We're going to cut these counter bores. I've got a half inch bit in there. I'm not going to go to the full depth. I'm just going to go until there's some side wall. Um, it'll be tight, but I think we'll be okay. I'm just going to get some side wall on it, and uh, then we'll take it to the mill. Oh, I remember what I was going to do with the other stuff. Anyway, so we're going to do this. I've got the speed way down. It might be really noisy. It might vibrate a lot. We'll see. Oh, this is good. I can deal with this. It's just loud. Just a little squealy. That's good. That's enough. All I'm doing is making a spot for the end mill that I'm going to use to cut the counterboard of the final depth. Yeah, that's good. 
Okay, this is working better than I expected. Sometimes that helps. Sometimes that happens. If at first you do succeed, try to hide your astonishment. She's a, she's a grabber. There we go. That should be plenty. Let me go a little deeper on this one, but that's it. We're good. Good. So what I've done, I've essentially made countersinks, although they're the wrong angle for that. But what I've done is there's, I don't know if you'll be able to see, there's a little, like, ledge on the hole. That is the vertical wall that'll become the counterbore. So we'll take this over to the mill next and do that process. Now we're getting set up to use my half inch end mill to uh, locate inside of these guys, which I see can happen, and uh, cut those counter bores the way I need them to be. So the first thing I will do after I get the cutter caught in here good and tight is I'm going to get to one of these and set my depth. Think. I'm going to unlock our axes here and come after this hole, I guess. Right there. Okay, there's your... That's a pretty good zero. So I'm going to put my very rarely used Z-stop into the position shake off all the crud because I truly do not and these things don't have to be super precise so if it stops there great all right now we're going to I'm going to get my lathe out of the way now we're going to go to find our first hole You probably can't see two tons of this, but is it there? We'll come back a little. It looks pretty close right there, eh? That seems okay. Alright. I'm gonna lock everything down and see what the heck happens. Alright, this will be Potentially disastrous or awesome. We'll see what happens. We'll start out kind of slow. Maybe we'll uh, engage the fine feed here. Okay, we're cutting. Yeah, we can handle a little faster cut, right? That's it, right there. That is our depth. It's actually a little deeper than necessary, but it's fine. Okay, so that was a pretty good success, I'd say. All right, let's, uh, let's unlock this access. Let's do this hole next. Alright, I've made an executive decision. I've decided I'm not even going to try to tap an oval hole. That'd be bad, and it's pretty oval. So I've decided I'm just going to use nuts and bolts on these. And uh, so I'm just going to drill them out for a through hole for a number eight bolt uh, screw, I guess is the right term. But uh, try to be on this corner and just drill through, I think, is what we're after. <laughs> That way, even if it's oval, I'm not making myself any more further headaches. Just trying to save myself some. Okay, we no longer need to be on the corner. We can be on the edge now. Just reposition here a little bit. A little more stable here if we can. There we go. There we go. Like that, and the last one. I'm 
also going to do the square one. I don't actually need to. Truly, I only had to do the one, but I want to treat them all exactly the same. I don't want to have nuts for one and threaded for the other. These are the only, oh no, there won't be the only nuts I'll need. So, or the only hex wrench needs I'll have. So, okay, we're going to take this down to uh, Electric Avenue. <laughs> no, no. Actually, you know what? I can do this right here. I'm getting tired of moving the table up and down, so I'm just going to set these guys right there. Put this guy on that. And we'll get it somewhat balanced. And we'll just start a drilling right here. Da -da 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 -da. And here. Yeah, this way we're treating them all exactly the same. I don't have one mount with one fastening system and one mount. I've already got that a little bit with this one, but. All right, that's good. Now we can run to the mill. So now what we're going to do is put a couple of slots in here. I'm basically going to put it in, locate this hole, go, I don't know, eighth of an inch more or so that way and about an eighth of an inch the other way. The slots don't need to be that big. So we're just going to mount her in the old device. I'm not even concerned about too much about parallelism I'm cutting through so I don't need a flat bottom even so we're just gonna register off the tops of my jaws that already have a little notch and we're gonna call that hopefully enough for parallelism that'll do I ain't going anywhere okay let's see if we can't screw this up how about that and once I find my Y I'm gonna leave it there Let's go with this side here first. Apologize for the setup time, but hey, it's part of the job, eh? Let's see. Did I eyeball that just right? I did. Check that out. Pretty good on the eyeballing. Yeah. Well, let's uh let's take her all the way down here. And uh see if I can't get her good and loosey-goosey yeah that's pretty good we're gonna call that our spot right there we're gonna lock the head down lock our Y make a bit of a mess oh yeah she's not exactly happy but all right we're gonna make a noisy bit I think it's gonna be loud we'll see I'm gonna take this really fast We locked the wrong axis down. Oh yeah, that's cutting just fine. I'm gonna eyeball this because it doesn't matter that much. I'm go about half my diameter over, and about half my diameter the other way. This should make about a half inch wide slot. That's funny. This thing does not need to be super precise. It's just a mounting slot. Okay, let's head over this way. I guess we can shut that off for now. That isn't the prettiest of slots, but it'll do. I truly don't give a damn about the precision. It just needs to allow for some sliding adjustment. I'm probably not even going to use that much of it. So, hey, a nice eyeball again, eh? Yeah, that's pretty damn good. Locked in, drop it down. So it's funny, it's fine up here, but not down below. So we're gonna plunge it, like so. Lock the head, give it a heck. A little recut in there, sorry. Yeah, a little bit of recut in there. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna go a little more this way. There we go. That's plenty good. So, that is one side slotted, one mount slotted. I will deburr the heck out of that shortly.
that's one part down. This part, besides deburring, is pretty much done. Got our slots in there. They aren't pretty, but they're slots, and that's all I really cared about. That on the deburring bench, I don't have a deburring bench, but that's what we're going to call the welding bench over there, which has become the uh, branding iron test burn bench more than anything. All right, cinch this one down here. I'm going to take a teensy little, no, it's actually fine. I'm just going to drop this down into the, into the sloot. We can unlock, that axis is actually unlocked, so we can come a this away. Uh, yeah, I'll lock that and lock our Z and give it that. Oop, she's mad. She's too bouncy. I'm gonna raise her up a little more. There we go. Give her a little, give her a little more. Now, if I were smart, I'd lift the tool. Clear those damn packed in chips a little bit so I'm not recutting. Uh, there's already some weld happening there, but hell, if we give it as much chance for not shitty as possible, maybe it'll come out better. was a violent sound but it's all right we're living yeah it's fine that was a bit violent we're gonna try that again this time with slightly less chip welding hopefully okay nothing's welded that's good just checking my end mill making sure it's clear hope my shadow or my head hasn't been in your way this entire time last slot I mean, conventional wisdom says take it in stages, I guess, but yeah, that's pretty good. Rising on. Not, not quite to depth yet. Cut. That's enough. I'm going to call that good before I break something. Perfect. All right. We've got our two bits slotted as required. Not bad. Not bad. I don't even know what those lengths are. I don't care. So I'm going to deburr those and get set up for the next step. Okay, so I got the hiccups. Ooh. Hold on. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs>